Hello and welcome to Override Audit, a freely available add-on package for Sublime Text that allows you to more easily work with your package overrides. In this video, we'll go over some of the features of Override Audit and what it can do for you. Override Audit works under Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, uh, but it supports Sublime Text 3 only. Now in this video, I'm using Sublime Text 3 build 3126 and Override Audit version 1.0, which at the time of this recording, are the most recent versions of both of them. And I'm doing this demonstration using a freshly installed version of Sublime with all settings at their default values, except for the font size, which I've made a little bigger to make things easier to read in the video. And the only package I currently have installed is package control. Now, depending on your version of Sublime and how you have it configured, what you see on your screen may be slightly different than what you see here, but the concepts remain the same. If you haven't already done so, the first thing to do is install Override Audit. And uh, like most Sublime Text packages, you can either do this manually or via package control. And I recommend package control because it's easier and it keeps your packages up to date for you. So I'll open up the command palette. I will find the install package command and wait for the list of packages. We will find Override Audit, press enter. Here it is installed, and we can see this message at the bottom that says, no packages with expired overrides found. This is one of the key features of Override Audit, which is to help you discover when your package overrides are out of date and might need to be updated. Here, this is a fresh install with no overrides, so it didn't find anything. Uh, but if there were any expired overrides, a report would have been created uh, to tell me which overrides are expired so I could check and see if I need to do anything. And we'll go over that in a moment and show you how that works. But I wanted to point that out so that if this happens to you when you install the package, you know what's going on. I'm going to close this message that package control showed me when it installed the package. Uh, just as a note though, uh, the readme file contains a detailed description of all the commands in Override Audit as well as information on all the available settings you can use and a section on the terminology that's used throughout Override Audit. You can get to the readme either here in the Preferences Package Settings Override Audit menu or from the command palette with the View readme command. Also, all the commands available within Override Audit are available both here in the menu under Tools Override Audit or from the command palette. In this video, I'll be using the command palette. The first command we're going to cover is the package report command, which gives you information on all the packages you currently have installed for Sublime Text. As we can see here, I currently have 53 packages installed and of those 53, 49 of them are shipped with Sublime. Three of them are installed user Sublime package files. One of them is unpacked in the packages directory. One is currently in the list of ignored packages and none of them are dependencies. Each package in the report is marked to tell you whether it's a shipped package and installed package or an unpacked package according to this legend at the top of the report. As we scroll through the list, uh, we can see that there are indeed three packages marked as installed, package control loader, package control, and override audit. The packages in the table are listed in roughly the order that Sublime loads them at startup. And down here near the bottom, we can see that the user package is the one unpacked package and that the vintage package is displayed in this grayed out color to tell me that this package is currently being ignored. Just to illustrate what these designations mean, if I select Browse Packages from the command palette, I get this Explorer window showing me the contents of the Packages folder, and we can see there's only one package listed, my user package, and if we look inside, we can see my preferences and some other files. If I go up to the Parent of the Packages folder, there's this other folder called Installed Packages. Inside of this folder, there are three Sublime package files, the two package control files and Override Audit itself. And you might be wondering about the shipped packages, which make up most of the report. They're not in either of these two directories, and that's because those are packages that ship with Sublime Text itself. 
Uh, they're common to all users of Sublime, so they're not inside this folder structure. And if I click here, we can see this is actually my home user folder. So the shipped packages are safely stored away in a different directory alongside the Sublime Text binary. The installed packages folder has a bit of an unfortunate name because it makes you think that it's the place where all installed packages go, but that's not true. Actually, it's the place that packages installed as Sublime package files go. It's also possible for a package to be installed as a set of unpacked files in the packages directory. In fact, it's possible for a package to exist as two or even all three of these designations at the same time. And that's the basis for overrides in Sublime Text. Before we continue on, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to install two more packages. The first is plain tasks. I'll just close this message window for the time being. And I'll install a package resource viewer. And in the package report, I can use the context menu to refresh my report uh, since the list of packages has changed. And we can see that there are now more installed and unpacked files, and there's a dependency now. If I jump quickly to plain tasks, we can see that it's an unpacked only package. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom of the report, we can see this package named dateutil that's also unpacked. and this red markup tells us that this is actually a dependency package. Next, we'll look at the override report. This is uh, currently quite boring because there are no overrides right now. So for demonstration purposes, let's set one up. Using package resource viewer, I'll open up the Python package and then the Python sublime build file, which is the default build file for Python. Now, let's say my computer has Python versions 2 and 3 installed, and I want this to use version 3. So I can modify both versions of this to use Python 3 instead of the regular Python. And then we'll save the file and close it. Now I'll refresh the report, uh, but this time I'll use the command palette. And as we can see here, I could also press the F5 key to do the same thing. Now override audit, it's telling me that it found a single override in the Python package. And here in front of the package name, uh, the package is prefixed with a shorter version of the codes from the package report, telling me that this is a package that shipped with Sublime and also has unpacked files. Now that I know there's an override, I might wanna know what exactly my override contains. I have a few options here, so let's cover all of them. First, I could use the command to diff a single override. I get prompted to select the package and then the override, and I get this diff view that shows the changes between my file and the underlying file. Now, if I switch to the override report, another way I could do this is to right click on the override and choose the diff override button and it brings me to this same window. If you have a lot of overrides that you want to quickly check the contents of, this would quickly get tedious. So we can perform a bulk diff for all of the overrides at the same time. Now as we can see, the command palette contains these two commands for that, one that prompts you to select the package to diff and one that just diffs every override in every package. I'll pick the single package version, and then again, I will select the Python package. Now, we end up with a report that looks very similar to the override report, only this time, under each override, there's a diff that shows what's different. And if I hover my mouse over here in the gutter, we can fold away any parts that we don't need, such as the contents of this override or the contents of this entire package. If there was more than one package here, you could slowly work through them. And again, uh, using the symbol list, I can jump directly to any package or override. So if there, again, if there are a lot of overrides, you can very quickly get to the one that you want to focus on first. 
Now let's say I've decided that I want to use Python 2 instead of Python 3. Just like in the override report, here in the bulk diff, I can right click on the file and choose the edit option and override audit will open the file for me to edit. So let's change the first Python back to what it originally was and save the file. Now I could go back to the report and choose the diff option from the context menu, but I also have that option here from within the edit session itself. There's also a command in the command palette for swapping between the override and its diff called swap diff override view. And as it shows here, I could use Alt O to do the same thing. Uh, if you're using Mac OS, that would be command Alt up. Now we can see the diff and there's only one line that's still different. So I'll press Alt O and swap to the other file and delete that one. And again, save, swap back to the diff. Now when we come back to the diff, there are no differences between the base file and our override. So we can go ahead and delete our override. Now, as you might have guessed, you can get this command from the command palette or from the context menu in the diff and even right from the override report. Now, override audit confirms with me that I meant to delete this file and then it gets rid of it. It's actually in my recycle bin so I could get it back if I need to. Now with that, I will close the diff. I will also close this file, which is the one I just deleted because it has unsaved changes and it's still open. Sublime asks me if I want to save it. If you change your mind about deleting it, you could save the changes and get it back, but I'm just going to say no to get it to go away. And now if I refresh in this bulk diff report, there are no simple overrides found. And over here in the override report, there are no packages with override files. So using these base commands, we can quickly determine what overrides exist and see what they contain and even quickly edit and delete any of them if need be. That leaves just one thing, the dreaded expired override. Now, when you create an override, Sublime completely ignores the base file and uses your file in its place as if it was inside of the Sublime package file. And if the author of the package should provide an update to the package and change the file that you're overriding, Sublime will still keep ignoring it and keep using yours. So if the author made a change to fix a bug or add a new feature, you'll never know about it because Sublime doesn't warn you. Now, fortunately, override audit to the rescue. To demonstrate this one, I've set up a little situation for us. Now let's pretend that we had that same override on the Python Sublime build file that we had before, and a new version of Sublime has been released. So we quit Sublime, update it, and now we're ready to start it again for the first time after the upgrade. This time I get this report telling me that there are some expired overrides. The python.sublime build file has a red X next to it to indicate that it has expired. Override audit detects an override has expired by checking the last modification time of your override file against the timestamp of the file inside of the Sublime package file. Now again, this could be because Sublime updated a default package or it could be because a package author updated their own package. Neither way, now that we've been warned, we can perform a check to see what may have changed so we can pick up any changes or just get rid of our override altogether if we no longer need it. Now this report shows you only overrides that have expired. Uh, the regular override report will show you this information as well, with the difference being that this one will show you just expired overrides, whereas the override report shows you all of them, and you don't have this warning at the top to tell you. Now this automated report triggers every time a package is upgraded and every time Sublime itself is upgraded, and as we saw at the beginning of the video, it triggers once when override audit is first installed. The best thing to do when you see an expired override is see if you need to incorporate any changes or maybe you don't even need your override at all and you can just delete it now. In order to mark the override as no longer expired, you'll need to open it up and save it again. Uh, that will change the last modification time to be more recent than the file inside of the Sublime package file.
an upcoming version of override audit will have a context command to allow you to do that a lot easier so you won't have to go to that step and that's that the end of our not so brief look into override audit hopefully you find the package helpful uh, if you have any issues or feature requests you can post those on the issue tracker and for any questions and comments head on over to the sublime text forum post on override audit i've linked to both of those pages down in the video description thanks for watching